Now, you know, and, and this also goes for, for, for most of Europe, uh, Western Europe at least. Um, certainly sort of this countries that are essentially capitalist. Um, we build our number system on commerce and trade. Okay, we start with counting numbers and elementary arithmetic. And this is typically how we teach kids in, in arithmetic. And then we proceed to fractions. Then we introduce negative numbers as best you can. It's tricky, that one. Smart kids ask questions that are very difficult to answer. Um, and then we slip in real numbers under the heading algebra. And we just... Uh, we pretend there's not a problem there. And from the point of view of a teacher, the first step is pretty good. There are good metaphors for counting. You know, I mean, you literally, you can count. And you can think of all sorts of metaphors for dealing with positive numbers. Um, fractions is pretty good. You can talk about breaking things away. I mean, you know, American mathematics books are talking about pizzas, but I guess that reflects just American <laughs> diet. Um, European textbooks, we, we cut up straight lines and squares and rectangles and pies. Actually, we don't cut up pizzas in Europe. We cut up pies, which is misleading because pie tends to mean something else. But anyway. Um, but there are good metaphors about sharing out in fractions. Um, negative numbers are sort of, you know, you, you read all sorts of weird stuff about helium balloons on balances and things, um, which is a really weak and misleading metaphor. But anyway, there's, there's all sorts of problems here, and, and kids sort of get lost. And uh, many an adult has enormous trouble really knowing what negative numbers are. You know, minus times minus equals plus, the reason why we won't discuss. Uh, was, was, was Hilaire Belloc, I think it was. Um, and in fact, most people actually can't give a good explanation of why minus one times minus one is plus one. Uh, and it's not because they're stupid, it's because it's actually kind of a tricky thing to do. Um, and this one, this is the famous don't ask, don't tell policy. You just don't raise the issue. You just say, well, there's, there's no problem here. We just have these continuous lines. Um, and, and then students get to university and they look at the construction of the real numbers from the rational numbers and they think, <coughs> I'm not going to be a mathematician. <coughs> okay. Um, and that's more or less the historical thread, starting in Sumeria and going through sort of commerce-driven society. <clears throat> in fact, the rest of today's lecture is going to be about how it came that Western Europe and then the United States was the dominant economic power for many centuries. You know, why is the word banking from an Italian word? Why is the word policy from an Italian word? Why is double-entry bookkeeping coming out of Italy? Why are financial districts often called Lombard Street? Why is all of the terminology about banking and finance and insurance and international trade, why is so much of that Italian? I'll come to that in the second half of the lecture. That was a case where mathematics really drove modern society and gave dominance to first Italy and then Germany, then Western Europe and then the United States and just took over from the rest of the world in, in economics and with its science as well. <clears throat> you know, why is it that Galileo was in Pisa? Just to why did it all happen in Italy? Something happened there. Well, several things happened, but one of them was to do with, uh, with this sequence of learning. But there's another way you could learn about them, another educational system, and this one was developed in the Soviet Union. I'm not sure if it's still used very much in Russia. <coughs> uh, this is known as the, the Davidoff curriculum, um, who was a Russian psychologist and educator, uh, died not, not that long ago, Vasily Davidoff. And he said we should start with the... You see, the problem with that last picture was going from the rationals... Well, the, the negative numbers is a problem, but going to the real numbers is a real problem. You've got the don't ask, don't tell policy. It's really very difficult conceptually. And he said we've got a concept of, this, of, of measurement that predates by hundreds of thousands of years counting, namely measurements of lengths and things. M most creatures have a sense of distance and length. They use it to sort of catch prey, to swing from tree to tree. I mean, there's an innate sense of distance in many creatures, much more sophisticated than a sense of, quant of, quant of counting. Counting is, discrete counting is, is much more restrictive in the, in, the, in the animal world. Okay, so most creatures, including humans, have this very rich sense of, of quantitative measurement. <clears throat> he said we should build our number system. In a, we should begin with the real numbers and with algebra, and then arithmetic will drop out as a special case, which is true. Um, because when you have the real numbers, the natural numbers are just points on a line. And it's just a particular instance of this thing. So he said it's better to begin with this rich sense of distance and volume that we've had for millennia. <coughs> uh, and in building a curriculum, he took um, Vygotsky's ideas 
and talked about spontaneous concepts via scientific concepts, and these are all technical terms, which I won't go into details about, but we can chat about them offline sometime. Um, spontaneous concepts when children just abstract from everyday experiences. But human beings don't just abstract, they theorize. And they can theorize from a very early age. In fact, they do. I mean, very young children theorize about things. They form theories from a very early age. And he says with a bit of, with a bit of nudging, you can take those ideas, this theorizing capacity, and develop what he calls scientific concepts. And this allows you to build a curriculum in which you get very naturally, at a very early age, from ages something like six to eight, you can begin by doing algebra and solving equations, and then arithmetic follows uh, as special cases. If you are interested, I have a, an online column called Devlin's Angle at the MAA. If you just type in Devlin's Angle, and you go back to 2008, and 2009, Christmas around 2008, 2009. I actually had two articles on these. Um, it's actually hard to find out much about this. This is written about a lot in the educational research literature. Um, my two articles are almost the only articles I've seen and come across um, that tries to explain these things uh, to a general audience. But there's another way. And so uh, these different cognitions can be taken advantage of from educational purposes. Stanford University.